Hey, welcome back to Sister Brunch with me, Fanchon Cox, and my beautiful co-host is very busy right now, directing lots of different things all in a row. So she will be back with us very soon. But meantime, I am here alone with today's guest, and I cannot wait for you to know more about her. If this might be your first time listening to the podcast, this is a podcast about Black women and non-binary folks striving and thriving in media, entertainment, and the arts. And we cannot wait to share more stories with you over the next few weeks. Now, today's guest is Ray Benjamin. She is a staff writer on season three of The Witcher on Netflix and is also writing an animated feature for Netflix. She's the co-creator of the animated web series, Julissa Who, and that is currently in development with Topic Studios and available to watch on Instagram and YouTube. Oh, we'll be talking about that, exactly how folks can see it. Ray is also the founder of In The Cut. If you are not getting their newsletter, what are you doing with your life? Make sure you sign up for their newsletter and we'll talk about that too. She's the founder of In The Cut. It's an organization that shares vital industry information and creates inclusive spaces for BIPOC creators. Since 2020, the In The Cut community has grown to more than 8,000 plus artists and filmmakers across the globe. So glad to have you on, Ray. Thank you. I'm glad yes. to be here. I sound very illustrious with the you, intro. You are <laughs> very illustrious. <laughs> 8,000 is nothing to laugh at. Plus, obviously, the fact that you're actually working. So we'll get into how one <laughs> balances, you know, all of this, all of the good things that you do for community as well as your regular job. But we always like to start our show by asking our guests to kind of go back as far as you'd like to from the beginning and talk about what has your path been to this career that you're on now? Yeah, I think my path was very non-traditional, very haphazard, if you will. Um, <laughs> I'm someone that did not go to film school. I had a completely different career and, and switched career. So I actually was a graphic designer for mm. a number of years and I quit my graphic design job in 2018 and decided, you know, I, I'd always done writing. It wasn't like a completely new, I, I'd written all my life. I went to an arts high school for creative writing, mm -hmm. but I just never took it seriously, I guess, as a career. But in 2018, I decided, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. So I quit working full time and just did freelance design so that I could have time to write. And luckily, I quit my job in like the summer. And luckily, by October, I got my first job in the industry, wow. which was being writer's assistant on Bridgerton season one. So <laughs> Just I a little something <laughs> called Bridgerton in case anyone has heard of that show. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't skip from then I just left my job and started <laughs> as a writer's assistant on Bridgerton. Tell us how you did that. Yeah, uh, basically everything is about networking. Mm. Like this industry is completely word of mouth, whether that's good or bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is sort of, unfortunately, like jobs, especially in a writer's room are not really publicly posted in any capacity. So you just sort of have to find out. So I'll rewind a little bit more. Okay. So like January of 2018, I made a vow, like I'm going to have a job in the entertainment industry by the end of the year. Even though I don't really know anything about this and don't know anyone who does this, but I'll figure it out. So then I started to do more research and, and figure things out. And I was able to get involved with um, the Hillman grad mentoring program mm -hmm. from Lena Waithe. But back when I joined, it wasn't like it is now. Like it wasn't a formalized sort of thing. You could literally just DM Lena and you would be in it. <laughs> so that's how I got in Wait, it. But how did you get Lena's? Oh, you mean like on her Instagram, social? I'm like, literally, like it was not, it was like, I love that. Uh, that was before Lena had won her Emmy. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she wasn't as, you know, uh, famous and inundated <laughs> as she was back then. So it really was just easier. Um, no, I love this point because I have made this point to people before and I've done it before 
a writer we were working with on uh, developing a series did the same thing. He found a writer he really loved and just DM'd him and was like, would you be willing to even just read the script or, you know, talk to us? And it, I think this is such a good point that a lot of times people don't realize that we want to help you, <laughs> you know, and, and social is a way for you to kind of reach out. I think that's such a good example. And so all to say, if you can't do it with Lena anymore, because obviously she's yeah. blown up, <laughs> but find the next Lena, right? Like mm -hmm. there are all kinds of, especially black women coming up who are, you know, they're written up in the emerging storytellers or whatever, find those women or the Ray Benjamins. I don't want to blow up your <laughs> yeah, DMs no, too. Don't ever. DM me. <laughs> You can DM in the cut, though. There you I, go. There you I, I do answer all those DMs. Don't DM my We've, so, in other words, you got to find the upcoming Ray Benjamin. Like, no, who's, who's... I literally, I within the cut, I strive to make myself available. So, any it. question, any DMs I get, emails like I get, I do answer them. I That's just amazing. sort of separate personal things from work things you know love it love it okay so you're in that program yeah and like I said it was it wasn't it's like structured how it is now so mm -hmm. my experience completely different than anyone who would apply and experience now there was no application it was just dm and you're sort of part of like a mailing list where you would just learn of things mm -hmm. um but Lena's assistant at the time, a writer named Kendra Jordan, who I really love, and she's a great person. Um, Kendra actually told me about the writer's assistant job on Bridgerton, so I had to submit a writing sample. I really didn't think I'd get the job because I primarily write comedy, and I was mm. like, well, it's a drama show. I guess I should submit a drama. And I literally had only written one drama script my entire life. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I guess I got to send this in. <laughs> and then um, the showrunner liked it. It, it, it just wow. happened to be the one drama that I had ever written was a period piece. Oh. Richardson's a period piece. It was Perfect. also like the same time period, though mine was set in America, but it wow. had some similar themes. So the showrunner really liked it. Liked it. I went in for the interview and I got the job. Wow. Okay. So certainly networking to your point, but let's not belittle the fact that you, even though this was your first script, obviously you did a good job on it. So can you talk about how you knew how to make it good? Yeah. In college, I took a screenwriting elective. So mm -hmm. I had taken an elective and that's where I learned about formatting. Like I said, I'd been writing all my life. So writing was something I would have always done since a child and had always, you know, been pretty good at. So it wasn't something I really had to learn, but screenwriting is such a different turn, like beast in terms of formatting. Mm -hmm. So really... I think taking that uh, college course really helped me understand formatting, especially someone who I normally wrote short stories and prose. And so writing a script is sort of the opposite, I would say, of writing like a novel or prose where you're being so overly descriptive and mm -hmm. you might describe like the outfit the character's wearing and mm -hmm. all their mm -hmm. inner thoughts, but a script, you sort of like get to the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like if it can't be seen, by the audience or heard you're not really going into deep description so right. I think uh that was sort of challenge for me to grasp at first but I just kept practicing it was the first drama script I'd written but it was by f not the first script I'd ever mm -hmm. written so mm -hmm. I still like had a pretty good grasp of writing and I think honestly what helped me get the job beyond that was just being prepared I knew that I was interviewing against other people like when I went in for the interview there was several people waiting to be interviewed mm -hmm. in the lobby mm -hmm. so I knew that it was a highly competitive job and I could not compete on terms of experience level because uh, this was my first job I had never really worked on a tv show so I knew I couldn't compete on that but I could compete by being prepared 
So the show was based on a series of books. I literally read all of those yes. books over the weekend. Like I <laughs> read eight <laughs> books in like three days <laughs> so that I could know what I was talking about in the yes. interview. I made sure I did a lot of research on the showrunner. The showrunner, Chris Van Dusen, he was a writer on Scandal, which was one of my favorite Mm. shows. So I went back and watched all the Scandal episodes that he had written so that I could like compliment specific things in the interview. So I just took the preparation. What I could control, you know, was just being prepared. And so I think he was impressed by that. Hey, this is Sister Brunch with Fanchon Cox. Stay tuned for more of our conversation with our incredible guest, writer, and In The Cut founder, Ray Benjamin. We're back. Check out more of our conversation with Ray Benjamin. So your writer's assistant's on Bridgerton, and then what happens? And then, so Bridgerton, we ended, started that October 2018. That room wrapped in like April, I think, 2019. Um, And then I purposely didn't want to work for a month because... I had learned so much uh, working in the writer's room in Bridgerton. Like I said, I'm someone that didn't go to film school. It just had taken one (laughs) screenwriting class. So (laughs) a lot of stuff was just, you know, practice and and Mm self-taught. So Mm -hmm. being in Bridgerton, I like to say that was like, going to grad school for me I got to see all of these writers who I admire and how Mm. they broke story and crafted you know character arcs and structure and it just made me realize that I didn't really know what I was doing (laughs) very well (laughs) so I sort of took that month off so that I could write and I rewrote Mm. every script that I had ever written because I just understood story at a much deeper level um, after working in that room so I took a month off and then about I will say yeah so after a month and a half maybe I got an email from one of the writers on Bridgerton who I became close with and she had asked if I wanted to interview for a job on The Witcher on Netflix And I said, okay. And then (laughs) it was for a script coordinator (laughs) job, which I also had never done. Mm. (laughs) I'd only been a writer's assistant and this job was for a script coordinator. I had no experience doing that. But I sort of just said in the interview, I did prepare myself much similar to Bridgerton. Like The Witcher is also based on books. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that those books are a, a bit longer, more denser to read than the Bridgerton books. I couldn't read all of them. Okay, well, okay. I did read one of them. So I read the first one okay. so that I could, you know, be knowledgeable in the interview and, and give my thoughts. And I was just upfront, like, yeah, I've never done this job before, but I am a very quick learner. And if you give me the opportunity, I will work hard and and learn and luckily someone gave me the opportunity and I will say the previous script coordinator he had been promoted to being a staff writer so he was still there in the room and he really helped me um, understand the job as well and uh, will you talk about the difference between writer's assistant and script coordinator yeah and for me (laughs) yeah yeah so there's Several support staff jobs in a writer's room. The what rounds out the support staff would be the writer's PA, the writer's assistant, showrunner's assistant, and script coordinator. So as a writer's assistant, you're really your job is just to take notes. You're in there with the writers every day. You're 
uh, obviously writers can be in a room for a long time, maybe eight, 10, 11, 12 hours mm. sometimes. Mm. So it's hard to remember everything that's said. So you want to make sure you're taking, you know, organized and comprehensive notes. So when the writer, it's their turn to write the episode, they can reference back to what had been said. Um, a script coordinator is a much more technical job. So your job is to um, review and distribute all the, the outlines and scripts for the show. So um, you, you also have to have a really strong grasp of script proper script formatting to mm. be a script coordinator because you have to catch continuity errors mm. a lot of the time you have to sometimes deal with um well you you would have to deal with the legal team as well and okay. sort of alert them to any sort of licensing sort of issues on the witcher our show you know it's a fantasy show so we don't we didn't have that many issues but mm -hmm. For issues that would come up for us, example, we only have the rights to the books, not the, the video games. So the okay. main issue was like just checking that we're not using any of the material for the video games, mm. like naming characters mm -hmm. or, or monsters. Like that was the main issue. But if you're on a, say you're on a show like Abbott Elementary or something and they, mm -hmm. they say, oh, we're going to drink a can of Coke in this episode, then you would have to alert the legal team and get permission from Coke, that sort of thing. So script coordinator is more of a technical job, but usually you still also have the opportunity to be in the writer's room and, and observe and pitch ideas unless there's a script going out, then you need to go and proofread it and send it out. Love it. Okay. So where does that take us to in your career path? So you're still at The Witcher, obviously. Yeah. So the room ended, but script coordinator, you're still staying on the show through production because okay. scripts are being rewritten and re-released. So as script coordinator, your job, you have a much longer job than if you're just a writer's assistant because you're only there while the show is being written. Mm -hmm. So stayed on show during production, but then COVID happened. <laughs> so our show <laughs> got shut down oh. for several months. Yes. And I was actually blessed to be honest because i netflix was great and paid us all even though we couldn't do our job so that's great i'll always that shout out netflix mm. <laughs> for doing they do that good things because i know a lot too. of i know a lot of people that worked at other studios and they just lost their job nothing um, yeah Yep. So I actually used that time. I had several months off and luckily I was getting paid. So I wasn't stressed. <laughs> yes. So I used that time to write and I, I wrote a new pilot that I had been thinking about. And that pilot helped me get representation. Yes. Um, a, a few, a couple of the writers on the Witcher asked to read my work and they both liked it so they sent along to various reps and then I got another meeting at a different company because of my web series just I just want to check in are you aware of the definition of rest uh I, I <laughs> Because I'm like, okay so you had both times now that you've mentioned you've had some time off you wrote, which listen, we want to encourage our our listeners to be a badass like Ray. <laughs> but also, Ray, you know, I, I'm going to be a little Auntie Fanchon here and just make sure like you do get some... Where's yeah, the rest? I feel okay. like I'm very chill. I'm very Good. not stressed. I don't okay. know. I just okay. also like being productive and I don't, I don't necessarily always count being productive as doing something for consumption like for me mm. going on a hike is a productive day for me oh so you'll but, be joining us on the 11 miler hey I, I love oh, I, oh. I hiked 12 miles a couple months ago I love it it doesn't scare you away I'll be sending yeah. you the details after this. <laughs> but I don't know for me I I just I like to be doing stuff yes. um I don't okay. like to be idle very long understood um, understood but, <laughs> yes so, yes but it, okay so, so this is why you you were filling your time and and I mean it is clear that you like writing you know what I'm yeah. saying like that that is that is also something that fulfills you beyond just work and that I think you can really see that and I think if we shift into talking about in the cut 
I feel that through your posts, I feel that they're like that you you love writing, you love being a writer, and you also love the writing community. And I really like that comes so clear, it <laughs> comes really beautifully and clearly. So let's what, at what point during all of this did you create in the cut? Yeah, I started in the cut like right before the pandemic. So I was still mm. a script coordinator on The Witcher. Mm-hmm. Um, we picked back up production. Oh yeah, we were still in production because the pandemic hadn't started. But <laughs> I I had always sort of had this idea ever since I became a writer's assistant because I I found like it was very hard to find information about how to become a television writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't even know what a writer's assistant was. Right. right. <laughs> I didn't know what a script coordinator was. Uh, I mean, I eventually knew because I had those jobs, but yep. a lot of times I think information is just very difficult to come by. Mm-hmm. And I knew, and I'm someone that, you know, grew up in LA. I'm from here. Um, and if I didn't know these things and, and found it difficult to find information, I'm sure other people were having the same issues. So I actually started in the cut as sort of a live event. Um, we did our first event January 2020, and it was just sort of like a workshop. It included me and uh, several of my other friends who were either staff writers or assistants and we were just giving people information. It wasn't like a panel. It was like a workshop where we were each sitting in small groups with the audience and we wow. each just rotate groups so people could actually get their questions answered and also create a sense of community with one another. Mm. And that was, it went well. We sold out in like an hour. I was <laughs> playing and I Love just it. put it on Instagram. Like I did no <laughs> sort of promo. <laughs> so it shocked me and so I was ready to do the next event and then corona happened and I had to cancel that event in March but that also was sort of a a good way for me to shift because at first I was just like well I started this business and now I can't do it because of the pandemic but a friend suggested that I do a webinar instead and if at first I just made a free webinar to just like replace the event that I was supposed to do Mm -hmm. but it went so well that I thought oh I guess I can just shift into doing this sort of thing now and so now everything's uh, pretty much online I do webinars at least once a month I've started to do also longer format courses that are much smaller like 15 people max where you Love can it. learn for a month. Um, I do want to start doing live events again, but right. it... we're getting closer. I feel like we're getting <laughs> closer to that. Maybe this summer. Tell our listeners a little bit more generally about In the Cut. So first of all, where can they find you? And then what resources can they access? And how do they get, become members, etc.? Yeah, so you can go to our website, which is inthecutla.org. And on there, there's uh, information. We have a a resources page that's just a list of books, podcasts, even YouTube videos, um, networking events or networking groups and blogs that we recommend for people who are interested in being primarily writers, but we also have information for actors, directors, producers, et cetera. And that's just our resources page. You can also follow us on Instagram at In The Cut LA and we share information on there as well. And then we have our Mighty Network, which is sort of like, I call it like a private Facebook pretty Mm -hmm, much, but mm -hmm. it, it functions in the same way. And you can join that for free to network with other screenwriters and filmmakers and and meet and create with each other and also you can um, upgrade to our premium version and then you'll get free access to all the webinars that we do plus you'll get um, access to all the recordings of all the past webinars we've done we've done almost 30 at this point and we have great great people we've had denise davis who um, yes. is the emmy nominated producer of insecure black lady sketch show we've had um just a lot of people so i love it and ray benjamin 
No. Who now you, it's, too, it's too late for you to DM her personally, but you can DM, and we will reiterate to DM on at in the cut yeah, on, she is. on Instagram. So this is amazing. And I think it's just, it's all such a great resource. And yet the reason we have to do this is because a lot of times still we're the only ones in the room. So I wonder if you're open to talking about what that experience has been was it different on Bridgerton as much as you can talk about it on Bridgerton versus The Witcher? Or, you know, what has it been like to be a Black woman in these rooms? Yeah, I think it's different. I feel like I, it's hard to compare just because my roles are different as an assistant versus being mm. a writer. Like, there's just different expectations. Right. But I will say... I've been fortunate to only have worked on shows where my opinion was valued. Like there's been a a couple instances, uh, one instance I can say, but even that was not from the showrunner. Um, That was from just another person who sucked. But, uh, there's always one there's always one but yeah. how, how wonderful that it was just one like yeah. did you have a specific one specific incident okay yeah honestly I, and That's I think great. I'm very intentional about that though like me like I was just raised to believe that my peace of mind is more important than anything <laughs> like my mom literally would just quit a job like <laughs> people yes. made her mad she would just quit and didn't care and she like get another job like I know I'm skilled I know what I'm talking about like I don't need to be in scarcity mode thinking mm. that I need to be clinging to one opportunity so Mm. that's really my mentality like I'm very intentional about where I work and if it's not a fit I'll just quit and it's not that I don't really (laughs) care that much like I don't I need you in my life, sister. I need that. Yeah. Can I just like pick up the phone sometimes? You should just remind me to just, you know, that it's not that serious. I say this a lot, like the world is wide, right? And especially now in the best of ways, there are so many opportunities in the industry because there are so many platforms and so many different ways, you know, different things you can write for or direct for or produce for. So this isn't the end of the world. If something isn't right for you, it's okay for you to move on. Hey, it's Fanchon and you're listening to Sister Brunch. We will be right back. But if you have not done this already, please go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Sister Brunch, Instagram at Sister Brunch Podcast, and Facebook at Facebook.com slash Sister Brunch Podcast. Leave us a comment, slide in the DMs, share your news with us. We really want to celebrate your hard work. So go ahead and find us on all the socials. So, Ray Benjamin, how can we, Sister Brunch, and also our listeners, find you, support you? Obviously, we know about In the Cut, but how about you personally? How can we support you? Me personally, I feel like, I don't know, I'd rather people support In the Cut. <laughs> you are so good. I didn't, I don't, yeah, she's I don't so mean, good. I didn't set uh, her up for that on purpose, but you, you're just good. you just a good person, right? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't. I just launched last week a new initiative called the Show Support Initiative for In the Cut. So oh um, I created a series of training videos that teach people about the entry level support staff jobs in the writer's room. So we cover writer's PA, writer's assistant, and showrunner's assistant. Mm. And this is a free course that people can watch. And after they watch it, they can create a profile on our um, database, which is made available to employers. There's people that have already gotten hired from this and it's only oh been out goodness. for a week. So my, uh, I ask you that if you're interested in these jobs, that you sign up and take the course. And you can find that out at our website in the cutla.org, or if you're in a position to hire people that you access the database and, and use it. Like my whole impetus for creating this is because once I started to become an assistant and then further when I started in the cut, a lot of people would ask me to recommend mm-hmm. um, 
BIPOC assistance, but they always wanted people with experience. Right. And I'm like, you can't say that you're committed to diversity, but also refuse to train people at the same time. Say it doesn't that, right. make oh. any sense. And so yeah. I understand maybe there's hesitance to train people because the industry is very fast paced. You just want someone that knows what you're doing. But at the same time, I feel like these jobs are not rocket science. They just mm. you can, it's, anyone can do them I believe if you just have some information Mm. so I wanted to see how I could help sort of even the playing field and give new people opportunities I love it now since you didn't say something that we could do for you because you are like that you're (laughs) such a good person it's what people can do for the community but I will say how about some views on Jaleesa who would that be helpful okay see (laughs) there you go okay uh so we can see Jaleesa who on YouTube and Instagram Instagram and it can't hurt to y'all just go watch it a few times, share the link, you know, tell folks to give some love to that web series. Yes, you can do that. (laughs) (laughs) We thank you, Ray. This has been incredible. I mean, as I said, I had already been following your work, but getting to know you a little bit here is just, I'm so glad and honored to know you and to know about the work that you continue to do. And also, as I said, Sister Brunch and all of our listeners, we are very much here to support you and your work. So thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. All right, everybody, that was our conversation with Ray Benjamin. Visit sisterbrunch.com to find out more about Ray and also how to support all of her upcoming projects. And don't forget to give her some views on her web series, Jaleesa Who. Follow us on Instagram at Sister Brunch Podcast. We're also on Twitter at Sister Brunch and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Sister Brunch Podcast. If you got questions for our Ask Sister Brunch segment, well, visit sisterbrunch.com to fill out the question form and we might just read and answer your question on the air. Also, don't forget to sign up for our monthly newsletter to get job tips, viewing recommendations, and lots more. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes. Your support is so helpful and so important to us. Our senior producer is Sonata Lee Narcis. Our show producer is Brittany Turner. Our executive producer is Christabel and Sia Bwadi. We acknowledge that the land we record our podcast on is the original land of the Tongva people for those of us in Los Angeles. Can't wait to see you next time and take care, everybody. Thank you.